Here is the ever popular GE model 7 4956 A and B versions. A is on the left, B is on the right. And it seems like everybody has one of these alarm clocks, but they're almost always the B version. So, what's the difference between the A and B versions? I'll get into very shortly. There's also another variant of this that has dual voltage with a switch on the bottom. If memory serves me correct, I thought it was UXW Build that had one, but I cannot find the video for the life of me. But before we get started on the differences, let's start with the B version here. I've had this since 2007. And here's a quick video from 2007. It has lots of bass and trouble. It sounds really good. Now we're going to do a demonstration using the built-in microphone. Auto, automatic level control and DC bias. Dun, dun, dun. This is a test again, speaking up close to the microphone. to 2023 the issue is the last time I went to use the tape deck it did not turn anymore I never did change the belts in it last time I had it apart was in 2007 and I merely cleaned the belts so it was finally time to replace the belts in it needless to say and that fixed it but while I had it apart cleaned it up cleaned the controls and by chance picking up the A version. Now, as I may have mentioned in one of my videos on this at times, I originally got mine Christmas of 1988. Hence, mine was the A version, the older version. I foolishly got rid of it in 1999. I regret that totally. So I finally got one back here, but it wasn't truly the same because there is a major difference, not from what an average person would notice, but to me, it was a big deal. So looking at it right now, there really is no difference. There is a, rev there is a number, which is the model number, and a revision number stamped onto the molding, the top molding. They're identical. These two top cases are identical. What is the first major difference that you can see from the outside? Well, let's go towards the A version. Do you see it yet? And do you see it yet? Look carefully at the tape deck spindles. Yes, they are both tannishin mechanisms, but the A version is the version with the um, non full auto stop it relies on uh, tape tension at the end to trip it and to me that's a big deal because it's just not the same knowing that difference they both play the same they both act the same and I'll get into that shortly but there's also some other differences internally electrically they're the same at least that I could see uh, the A version has like an extra metal plate in the back here somewhere as you'll see but the a version has the light color like light beige colored circuit boards and that's what you find on the ge made boom boxes they use the same exact circuit boards that's how you know who made it and yes these are made by general electric these are general electric's own design and in my opinion this this model here is probably one of the last great general electric alarm clocks made there is a model after this that went to a red led and there's also another version that uses in backlit lcd but this is talking 90s when it started looking like biscuits per emerson collie but this is probably one of the last great general electric alarm clocks i mean it has everything you can look at i mean 
a Futaba VFD that many makes and models used, but it still has your wood grain in a very nice fashion. It has brushed aluminum look to it. Um, and it just looks cool overall. And also, in my opinion, General Electric made some of the best sounding clock radios. Everybody else has had that typical tinny sound. Not saying all, I'm just saying a lot of them did. But General Electric's always sounded fantastic, just like their boom boxes. They seem to outperform so many others. And, you know, pretty much after this is when they really started getting cheap. Yes, these are Thompson era. But before we get into it, uh, let me just show something here. Yes, the soft eject mechanism, the grease kind of is done for in it. I'm not too worried about that. It's kind of plastic welded in place. I can change it. I don't have a spare right now. This is what this one does. That's what, what it normally would do. So let's just look over here for a second before we really get into the details. Uh, play. And that's the standard, you know, and you got to fast forward. They have that distinct sound to them. And rewind. But you see auto stop. And also a little trick, if you're servicing one of these and need to test it, just press pause and hit rewind. It'll continuously rewind. The reason being the auto stop cam gear is on this reel here. In my opinion, of the Tanishin mechanisms, the full auto stop version seems to be a lot more reliable, and I hardly ever see these chew up tapes, whereas this one here has a constant problem with that. It's because one thing, Tanishin used very thin belts, uh, 0.7 millimeter thick. Uh, it is wise to put the appropriately sized belt on to minimize wow and flutter, but 0.7 was just cost cutting. That's just way too small. And that caused slippage and other problems and often caused that. Whereas what's in here now on both of them, they both have a one millimeter thick belt. And that won't affect anything. In fact, now it'll be a lot more reliable, less chance of it slipping. Um, mainly that would be concern for not driving the capstan flywheel, but... You see, transferring that up, this one here works different, as you'll see, but it requires another belt to drive the idler here in the middle of this one, and that has to transfer power to the other clutch, or sorry, to the clutch on top of here, drive that. Sometimes it doesn't grab right because it's such a thin belt that this spindle doesn't turn, and hence your tape gets eaten. Whereas this one, it's directly gear driven. Uh, it's a, by the same gear that has the mechanism to do the auto stop. Like I said, this one here, I can reach my finger here and trip the auto stop, just like that. Uh, fast forward, rewind, but you see, it just sits there and spins all day long. There's nothing to trip it. Now, looking at the bottom on the A version, look over here, 7-4956A. Everything looks mostly as you'd expect in here, including GE's own quality check sticker. Manufactured uh, Friday, 1988, 46th week. That's how you read that. Made in Malaysia. But come over to this one. As you can see, it's the B version. Everything's still mostly identical. But when you come over here, wait, what? Made in China. I don't know where specifically. This one's also a Friday, 1991, 38th week. They made this model, no matter which version you're thinking of. This one seems, the A version seems to be not that common. Like nobody else really has it. When I saw this, I knew what it was. I had to grab it. This one here, seems, like I said, seems like 1989 newer, like that's all everybody had. And I think they ran this all the way up until 1992, this particular model. Looking at the idler here, this is what came out of this unit. And it was really making a racket. And the reason for that was because 
you see, look on the left. You see how there's a big gap between the two teeth? There's a small hairline crack there. And you might, you know, it's around the metal pin. And you're going to say, well, that's age-related. No, not necessarily. These things made that same sound since new, so it's a pretty common issue. But what really gets me is the idler I replaced it with from another Tanishin mechanism actually had a clutch on the other side for rewind and fast forward. So when it hits the end of the tape, it won't hurt anything. It'll just sit there and the motor and belts will keep spinning. If this one hits, hit the end of the tape, it would sit there and if you hear that squealing sound, that's your belt. Your belt is actually squealing. So what if you uh, actually, you know, hit rewind, but you walked out of the room to say use the bathroom and come back? This thing here will be chewing up your belt, squealing, whereas if I had the clutch in it, it won't hurt a thing. The clutch is just like a felt pad against nylon. It never wears out. But yeah, that's one sign of cheapness. You see, this after Tanishin came out of this, this particular design, which would be around 80, late 85, 1986, where everybody used it, um... I never much cared for it. However, that said, it is a million times better than the cheap shit they have today. That's the knockoff version of this. It did get cheaper over the years, but I will say, despite the shortcomings of these um, off-the-shelf Tanishin mechanisms, they it plays the tape well. There's no noticeable flutter. It does sound rather decent, you know. You take something from the late 90s onward, even if it was still a genuine Tanishin, it always had annoying flutter, especially if you recorded something and played it back. These modern ones that use these knockoffs sound like pure crap. And I'm sure we've all seen the videos. V West Life does a lot. Tech Bone does a lot. We all know that. And I'll be doing a video soon on some vintage uh, Tanishins. You know, not many people are know about the older versions 85 and earlier the gear that drives it during playbacks does rubber idler tire to reduce to dampen vibrations 1983 and older ones had a much heavier thicker flywheel uh, the 1979 versions are absolute tanks in comparison and they were just an off-the-shelf unit that any manufacturer could use they used to make a really good tape deck it just evolved into this. All right, so this is upon first looking at the A version. Uh, circuit board's actually labeled as white, uh, as I saw on the other side, but it does at times, you know, it has like a sort of a, like a beige look to it. But you see the uh, B version is a dark brown, and they love to use lots of hot glue. But the circuit appeared to be almost the same otherwise. Um, I tried following it. I didn't dig through it that deeply, but um, yeah, uh, as you'll find out, there is some slight audio uh, tonal differences, especially recording with the built-in microphone. But notice how the A version is much cleaner looking inside too. Okay, now I'm going to show that's that shield uh, that's not on the um, B version, as you can see right there. So looking at the tape deck, the uh, B version has the full auto stop Tanishin, but it takes the same size belt from the motor to flywheel. See, it looks very similar from behind. It was also a bit stiff, needed lubrication. I just put one drop of oil on the bearing and reinsert it. Of course, naturally, you wipe it down with alcohol once it's on there because that's the capstan. Now, this is the um, full auto stop version. That's what I'm talking about. The the um, auto stop mechanism is directly driven off the flywheel. It also dr drives the uh, playback clutch during playback. Record play switch. I sprayed the oxit down there every time. Just as a preventative measure. Uh, no, I shouldn't say deoxit. I use that CRC stuff now. And not only is it cheaper, it works far better. Yeah, so that's the size belt. Square belt, orbital, 6.6 .6 inches. Anyways, you can see I'm using one millimeter thick belts now instead of the super thin 0.7 millimeter. 
tannish and put on from the factory. There's that has a nice big loop stick antenna. Here you can see how the auto stop mechanism works. A little gear moving in and out, in and out. And when you add um, enough, it applies enough torque to it by stalling it. It transfers it and it causes the trip like that. So adjusting uh, tape head azimuth right there. Just need a little bit of tweaking to get it perfect again. Okay, now we're back to the A version of the uh, regular auto stop mechanism tannishing. Also, if you observe right there, when I stalled it, it was still spinning underneath the belt and everything. When I stalled it with that, yeah, see, that's the clutch on that one. I'm comparing it to clutch version has a spring on it like that. So you see that one actually has to go through the second belt to drive it. And if you stall it, see that's the clutch underneath spinning. And you trip the auto stop like that. Lastly, uh, that blue tinted window filter is um, just glued in place. You can pry it back out. Did that to clean in behind it and use Novus and all that stuff. So, yeah, that's really the major differences there in terms of the circuit board. It's the same, just one's a dark brown because it's coming out of a different facility. Anyways, a uh, quick tour, um, in case you didn't know, it does have a built-in microphone. If you hold the snooze button, it'll display the seconds. I do have these synchronized perfectly. You can get other makes of alarm clocks with the same Futaba display and uh, same controller, a clock controller, and it, it'll do the same thing if you hit snooze. In fact, there may be a video coming up soon, oddly of a sound design that has the same display. And that one is sort of special to me, and I'll get into that later. But it is a two wake time, two alarm times. You have off music, alarm, and set. You know, you can flick it up. Oh, weird. If you put them both in set, it just defaults back to the time. It's pretty smart to do that. Uh, yeah, and this one is the same. Really, like I said, functionality-wise, that aside what I may have shown, it's really no difference otherwise. And in the uh, last, uh, let's see, 15 Year plus years this thing's been plugged in. It has not had any degradation in the VFD at all. The only thing that has changed is after a while when I started getting a small collection of vintage alarm clocks, I started rotating them out. Now, unfortunately for this design, the cassette deck does not, you, you cannot wake to cassette. So in terms of performance, it is pretty much the same unit however there might be a either a slight electronic modification which i didn't notice or a difference in the speaker used because it is a different speaker almost the same though but the a version tends to get better treble response and a little bit cleaner sound it probably will not show up on youtube of course but um let me try to find uh something on the radio um the pull in. Uh, the antenna is inductively coupled to the power cord, as in just several turns of wire wrapped around the power cord. That's how that works. It's just like a sort of like having its own antenna, you know, except it's part of the power cord. And before we get into demonstration of it, I did a video on this a year or two ago. This is the GE model 7 4975B. This is the predecessor to that alarm clock there i am assuming that anyways um 1984 uh looks a little bit more early 80s i love it um this one has uh infinitely variable brightness on the display yeah lighted tuner dial a message led uh you record a message on a tape for someone Press this in and say, hey, I left you something. You play it back. So unlike the 7-4956s, this one you can wake to cassette. And in fact, looking by the function uh, switch, yeah, you can even have wake the radio, wake the tape. Even the sleep function can be tape or radio. 
This one gives you a tone control, light a tuner dial. And this one does have a Tanisha mechanism, but it's the older version, the version before the cheap ones we have now. This one still has a rubber idler, tired of damp and vibration. And uh, it, I never had a problem with any of these ones here. These ones work very well. In fact, see, I got the radio on. I have to actually uh, turn this off. There, now it starts up. So, yeah, it's a very quiet mechanism. Works very well. So, yeah, this is my current alarm clock. And, yeah. This is what I'm assuming preceded. I don't know if there's a model in between it or not, but I really love this one here. All right, so let's do a quick thing through the tuner. And this is without even messing with the power cord. This is your present. The USDA says seizures of eggs and poultry at conflict avoidance is just easier. Her alma mater, she tosses them in the Elite Eight. She doesn't even know what the numbers are. in the gaps where Medicare stops. Time to choose Bite Clear Aligners. song by the Eagles, but it is so overplayed, I'm tired of it. For many years, I've been tired of it. But yeah, you see, it works extremely well. Performance is pretty much identical on this one over here. Um, so yeah, I know I'm kind of focusing on the A, but when I go to cassette, I'll do the B, because what you're seeing now is going to be roughly the same. AM inside, as you saw, has a rather decently sized loop stick antenna, probably about that long right here. Pittsburgh, W261AX Pittsburgh. Always live on the free Odyssey app. All right, back with your Pratt Pack on a Monday night, January 23rd. In case you're keeping track, uh, we have a lot to get to, and that will end round one, if you will, but much more still to come up until 10 o'clock. And don't forget, major. See? Sounds very good. So, a quick comparison, like 96.9 I have on right now. Like I said, in person, you can hear as much, sounds much cleaner, tre more treble response, but. Uh, fire. I'll go over here. Fire. Again, it's probably not gonna show up on YouTube. It's one of those things, but either way, you can get the gist of it. It's a really great sounding clock radio. And I know before, just early, I was, you know, it's a Tanisha mechanism. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of this particular Tanisha mechanism onward, but despite that, it still does its job though. Ignoring what I said, no flutter in the audio, and it sounds, perfect i mean yeah it was cheap but it got the job done you know i had stuff from the late 90s with this is actually the same type of tanisha mechanism they cheapened it so much to the point where there was so much flutter in the audio especially if you recorded and played back on the unit it was terrible and then you got the chinese knockoffs of this today that are absolutely terrible 
But in the meantime, we will demonstrate. Uh, we'll start off recording and playback. Available as a hybrid or plug-in so hybrid. Start off here as we record the commercial. Kia Forte. See where value meets styling. Don't zero heartburn with Prilosec OTC. It's possible while taking Prilosec OTC. Use as directed for 14 days to treat frequent heartburn, not for immediate relief. Okay, so here's playback of the recordings I did. First, the A version, my built-in microphone, then the B version, built-in microphone. And yes, there is a pretty substantial difference, as I just found out. Then recording off the radio on the B version, then back to the A version for the radio. All right, recording on the A version. This is what it sounds like through the built-in microphone. And it actually sounds a lot better than the B version, as you will see shortly. And you hear a little bit of sibilance in there. That's DC bias and a lot of background noise. Okay, recording on the B version with the full auto stop. So now I'm going to swap. Actually, no, why should I swap? Let's record off the radio on the B version. Your hometown building partner since 1956, 84 Lumber. Visit 84lumber.com. Shopping for a new or certified pre-owned car? Thinking Kia? Think South. South Hills Kia is Pittsburgh's home for all things Kia. Come see the all-new 2023 Kia EV6 all-electric SUV. Or the all-new redesigned 2023 Kia Sportage. Available as a hybrid or plug-in hybrid. Or the fuel-efficient 2023 Kia Forte. See where value meets styling. Don't see your dream car on the lot? Ask about pre-ordering from their incoming inventory. South Hills Kia, Route 19, Peter Township. Shop anytime at SouthHillsKia.com. Use as directed for 14 days to treat frequent heartburn, not for immediate relief. When you can't stop, <coughs> there's Vicks VapoRub. Vicks VapoRub sends powerful medicated Vicks vapors right to the source of your... <coughs> so you can experience cough relief and breathe easier. Generations of families have trusted Vicks VapoRub to help relieve the worst cold symptoms. So next time you have a cough, reach for the Vicks VapoRub. Vicks VapoRub. Cough relieving is believing. So, yeah, you can definitely hear the A version had a lot better sound quality. So there is something different. I just didn't dig that deep into it uh, between the two. I'm not going to play back what I just did because it would be sort of long and repetitious. However, that said, I will play a good tape I made, that royalty-free music tape I recorded on the GE Omnitech boombox from 1982. Uh, yes, it is a chrome tape, but that will really help show the performance of this. Oh, yeah, also observe, it's at the end of the tape. The rewind is still pressed. No squealing noises, no nothing. The belts, the motor, everything's free moving because of that clutch. If, that, if I didn't change that out, so that basically I gave this thing an upgrade. If I didn't do that, right now you hear that squealing sound right there. That's your belt. <laughs> definitely has something slightly different about it because it definitely sounded better um and yes the tape head azimuths are properly adjusted but on that note that concludes this demonstration of the 7-4956 a and b alarm clocks now you know the differences now i gotta find the dual voltage version thanks for watching Special shout out and thanks to Liz, our star patron.
gonna let the yayas out. Ba 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 banana. And it was very good.